Hello and welcome to another edition of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly, humbly ask that you please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the Carvers and our special guests. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Let's meet the Carvers. First, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts, broadcasting today from New Hampshire. He is the 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins, Paul Dever. Welcome. Welcome, Paul. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. <laughs> Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2119 2119 2019 wow. on the Food Network. Matt Harper, welcome. <laughs> we went hey, way in the future Matt. on that one. We really did. 2119. Boy, this show's been going forever. Yeah. This is <laughs> I hope episode we can go that 3 million long. 200. And, yeah. You look great, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Our guest today recreates characters and creatures into lifelike statues, some taking up to 120 hours. From the Netherlands, wow. please welcome multi-talented Joop Bongarts. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes. And uh, Joop, I'd like to introduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner, in which uh, we actually uh, base all of our carvings off today. Actually, Matt and Paul will be carving. So uh, let let Paul explain uh, what the deal is uh, with the uh, with the, the wheel. wheel with the wheel deal with the wheel. Hey guys, I don't have my typical camera set up. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so this is yes. the wheel for those that don't know, and it's got little mayflies all over it. Okay, so we got the wheel, and this will have our characters on the inner portion. On the outer portion is going to be the emotion in which we're going to try to put on the inner wheel. So we've got everything from primate to a cyclops. To a robot the emotions are flirty which i know for some reason we're going to land on perplexed grizzled <laughs> whole bunch of stuff here all kinds of good stuff and um all that's left for me to do is spin it so let's give it a do shot it. come on baby choice yope's choice oh. Ooh. okay all right. Oh boy. Oh, I can choose. Uh, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Of all of all those things on that you wheel, think about uh, what do you like, yo? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah. We got. Dude, I called it flirty. Flirty. Wait, what happened? Well, you can make up whatever you want. See. Yeah. So it's a flirty. Uh, it's a flirty, a flirty something. Go ahead. Cool. And we'll then let go yo. for a gremlin. Flirty choice. Oh, a flirty gremlin. gremlin? Okay. Oh, yeah. flirty. Nice. Nice. Been Thank you, please. Forever. <laughs> Please write that down, Mickey, because yes, I'm already. Yes, I'm 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 Rick, 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 yeah. yes, a flirty gremlin. Cool. So, um, if you're going to carve with us today or create with us today, we're going to give you five minutes to grab your tools, pumpkin squash, any other perishable item, uh, and uh, you oh, can uh, do along with us. We definitely want to see the results of what you make. Uh, a flirty gremlin is going to be a, a very, very creative. <laughs> so. Um, Careful what you ask, what you wish for here. I mean, this yes. is a, uh, oh my God, flirty gremlin. <laughs> okay. And usually uh, at this time, we, we, we toast uh, with an, uh, an alcoholic beverage or uh, of something of, of choice like that. I think Paul and, and uh, Yope are the only people in a, a time zone uh, that could probably handle that. Um, it's pretty it's pretty early here since we're, uh, we're recording this one. So I, I have my bulletproof uh uh, cold brew latte. Uh, Matt, what do you have? I, I know it's something probably tame as well. <laughs> no yes, way. I, he went for it. I went for it. I, it's a, I just finished up. I, I polished down an entire fifth of whiskey, but that was right before <laughs> the thing started. So I'm going to just stick with uh, this is a San Pellegrino Italian sparkling drink of some oh, sort. Oh, so, fancy. I, it is morning here. Fancy. So I'm, I'm going to. I still got stuff I got to do today. You know, yes. Otherwise, I. Yope, uh, what do you, what do you what do you have? What are you enjoying? Uh, I just had like a water bottle for uh, perfect. Like, it's it's all I got, but it's. <laughs> uh, we'll just tell. We'll, we'll just pretend it's all gin in there, right? Yeah, exactly. Then it's fine. <laughs> okay. And then Paul has his uh, carving uh, carving oil, right? 
I got my carving oil. Today I'm going with UFO white. It's a uh, crisp, Ooh. light bodied and brewed with orange peel and coriander. Oh, nice. From this is uh, Hapoon, right? Isn't it? You, oh, no, UFO is UFO. No, Hapoon. I don't yeah, know. It? Whatever. It's delicious. Okay. Yes. It's somebody. Okay. <laughs> it's somebody. Well, cheers, guys. Cheers to, uh, yes, cheers to, a cheers show to our creations and uh, looking forward to having some great discussions. So, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to start out uh, with kind of how we kind of start these things now when we meet someone new. Um, I, I want to hear from y the, your mouth, Yope. Uh, how, how do you, I mean, you're, you're, your work Use is your incredible. Words. Your work is absolutely incredible. <laughs> and, Unbelievable. And so when we, when we, but, but the one thing that we always, we're asking ourselves is like, does Yope create this for himself, uh, for other people, for movies, for TV? Like, what, what exactly? Uh, how to, and 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 how did you get started doing this? Well, uh, I actually started doing this. Like, I actually, as a kid, I always was uh, drawing things, and yeah. at one point, I felt like uh, drawing wasn't enough. Like, it's two dimensional. I can't really make all the things I want to make. So then I started painting, but that kind of had the same thing. And then I went into sculpting, and that kind of progressed in. Yeah, doing what I now do. At one point, I found uh, a local uh, special effects studio in Holland, and they actually taught me anything, everything I'm doing now. So that's uh, oh my god, that's kind of how I came here. And wow. It's kind of now so, it became like, a mix with like private things, like just things I like to make. Sometimes private commissions, and it's, uh, yeah, kind of a mixture. Wow. So, so you almost didn't like an apprenticeship. Yeah, of sort. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, like at, at age fifteen, I believe I came the first time there, but I still had to finish high school. So after high school, I immediately went to their shop to uh, start as an uh, yeah trainee. Okay. Yeah. So learning. So, were you, so you learned on the job. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. amazing. Yeah. So we we did you start by I mean um, I'm assuming it's a special special effects studio. We did you start by doing kind of a lo little bit of everything, or did you jump right into sculpting, or or uh, was it maquettes or, or clay, or how'd you? What was your first thing to mess with? Well, actually, first uh, when I was 15, I was because I was still at school. I could only visit there once a month because I was on the other side of the country. So yeah. uh, I came there once a month, and then they just let me do my own private sculptures. So I okay. like said like, hey, I want to make this. And they said, okay, make it and we'll just guide you. So I make something and they will like say like, yeah, here's the anatomy off or look at this, how are they oh. doing this? Yeah. So like in that way, really in a, yeah, su super playful, but super also intense way. They really yeah. taught me everything about sculpting first because they also said like, that's, that's the fundament of the whole special effects business uh, in their opinion. Like if you have something nice of a sculpture, like that's the fundament. That's the best thing you can have. So yeah, that, that was the first thing they taught me, and also the thing that I found the most interesting. Yeah. Wow. So what kind that of is studio? Just outstanding. That's the you. They... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, I couldn't go ahead, Matt. Nope, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I was just gonna say. I, I'm just. I'm curious to look, learn more about the studio itself. I mean, do they? Is it for for movies or, or is it for yeah. TV? And okay, so you. This is for special effects for movies. Yeah, that's a special effects shop uh, called uh, Rob's Prop Shop. It's uh, and they actually pretty much do almost all the stuff for Holland, uh, for Belgium, also a lot of international work. Oh, yeah, wow. they, okay. Like in wow. comparison to the American studios, they're pretty small, but they do a lot of stuff. It's like crazy. Okay. What a, what a great what a great place to to start. I mean, like yeah. and to have that kind of direction and, and uh, mentors and coaches to help you. Man, Paul, we 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 started the wrong. We just should have gone to the <laughs> Netherlands and go sat with him. Well, that's what Seems I'm like saying. Is everybody in the Netherlands so open and like just hey, come on in. We'll show you what we know. I feel like sometimes, uh, like the Schiffler brothers were saying that when they asked somebody early on, they were like, "Well, I'm not going to show you. The, I'm not going to show you how how I do it." And these guys literally said to you, "We'll show you everything you need to know." Moving yeah, to the Netherlands. Basically. Yeah, I am moving well, to the Netherlands. That's it. That, that's also <laughs> you can do that, but I think it's also kind of the like how it should be, right? Because I think Dick Smith was the totally. first one who actually started with that. And if you just look at every artist he inspired, like I think they're also one of them, and they also thought like, yeah, we just want to learn this stuff to people so they can do it the right way. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's outstanding. Wow. And you clearly, you clearly walked in there with with a a, a, little, a lot of talent to begin with. Yes. 
um, but from a painting and, and drawing perspective, but like when I look at your sculptures and they're so realistic and so like, I mean, you, you punch hair, you do uh, the skin tone, the word. textures, it <laughs> blows that's my mind. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, thank you. Now, what is the, what is the, what was this for? Did you just make this because you wanted to make a realistic Squidward? Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I and just thought like, you always see these uh, SpongeBob and all, every, all those characters like realistic interpretation. I thought like, well, this is the best character to do it. But yeah. Nobody really yeah. did it in my opinion the right way. So I, I yeah. wanted to try it and see if I could get close to what I like had in my mind. Wow. It is outstanding and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was the my, idea, my, especially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my son flipped out when he saw it. He thought it was the best thing he'd ever seen. It's it's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Now, did you yeah. did you cast it or is that do you still have that in clay? I still have the clay here, so I just kind of I'm in between all, all kinds of stuff because I'm also uh, still at school, so I have to uh, I'm now finishing some things up and hope like in the summer I can make the mold and cast it and really take time for it. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I can't wait to see that thing painted. It's just yeah. gonna be it's gonna be so cool. I mean, the skin tone. I mean, the the octopus head and the I mean the skin tone and the and the texture is just mind boggling. But it's totally Squidward. I mean, you, this is how he would look. Yeah. If yeah. that if, if you were walking around with us, that's that's all. There's no mistaking who that is. That is. Yeah, just, and it's it, it's it's Squidward from every angle too. It's not like uh, yeah. it, you can only look at it from one angle. It's like it, it's um, it's absolutely amazing. The the texture it is, really is is outstanding, and I think that's the thing too. It's like it it could have onto one level of where you would get it that is Squidward, but it's like the the level of detail, like in the nose alone. I mean, like it's, it's insane. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I, I love that. I love that. This is just out of your own head. Like I, I want to do one. Do you, do you typically get commissions that allow you to just go hog wild and like you have a character in mind and they say, Hey, just make me something you want to make. Or is it, did they, did they ask you specific characters pretty much? Yeah. Mostly, mostly super specific. Like, okay. uh, and that's that's also cool because it really teaches you how people make stuff because you have to redo that. But also that was also the reason right. I started wanted to do this. It's something super free. I kind of miss yeah. that sometimes in the commissions. Yeah. So uh, this was a nice change. And when you do when you do a commission, uh, let's say um, you know one of the one of your orcs or something like that, like like the guys behind you, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, are, are those are they one of ones? Or are you casting them to make? more copies of them or is it something where you just you're making one and then that's theirs mostly it's just i start making one for someone and if people want more then it's okay but mostly just a few because i want to keep making new stuff i don't want to be too yeah. much of a like a uh, factory kind of work that's not okay. like i want to yeah. keep it fun because that also shows your work i believe right okay so i get it yeah this i can't i can't believe this isn't zbrush <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that looks like CGI. That's outstanding. I mean, now, now, did you? Did, I got a question about this one because I'm so fascinated at, at how exactly, I mean, precise it is to the character in the movie, and not only that, but just the it, the human. It looks like it's you know it's gonna it's gonna hurt me. You know that that it, it's so yeah. And um, so the the hair, the paint, the eyes. I mean, everything is just so great. I mean, even the skin, the sheen on the skin. Um, Question is, do you, do you start with a, a photograph, like a clip from the movie and, and just really zoom in on that and is, use that to start? Or, or how are you, because it's just so so perfectly spot on. It just blows my mind. Just well, thank you. Mostly, of, yeah. Mostly I just start with, uh, first, if I have time, I just watch the movie to kind of get an idea of the character. Mostly yeah. I've already seen the movie. That's, uh, that's nice. <laughs> but yeah. uh, then you just like make screenshots, look for pictures, you just look. Try to find every corner every of the angle. face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay. you can just like pinpoint everything and like uh, measure it and check it, and then kind of you have okay. just this giant map of pictures. Wow. So do you? So you, when you do use reference like that, you blow up all the pictures to one by one so that you can do calculations as far as proportion to measure. Uh, yeah, I, well, I do it a bit different way. The end result is the same. I mostly then I just uh, look for a good picture of the front or the side. And then I just uh, like if it's a human head, I just, uh, for example, look at, OK, a human head is this size. And then I'll just measure everything and then I'll calculate what the sizes of everything is. 
So Scale it, yeah. it's kind of the same idea, but then, uh, yeah. Wow. That's outstanding. Yeah. And we were, we were, uh, kind of commenting, uh, before this, that, um, wow. you give credit to uh, people that actually do the eyes. So, yeah. um, and, and I think that's one of the things that, um, that, that really gives it that, that human look is, is these eyes. Can you uh, talk about that? Yeah, uh, well, the studio that I mostly ordered my eyes from is Fort Steel Studios. I think you, you will know it. Mm -hmm. They make great eyes. And uh, actually, this is the first set of eyes I made myself using the set from Fort Steel Studios. Oh, because okay. oh, wow. they are located in Los Angeles, I believe. And that's, uh, for me, it, the, like the distance makes it that it can take weeks just because of traveling alone that's until it arrives. And that's mostly wow. not a problem. But it is cool to be a little bit more flexible and like changing things. And uh, maybe if you have a rush job, then you can like do it yourself. So now they got this great set of eyes and got here a new set for King Kong. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. oh okay. You see it. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Wow. And that's like with their set of eyes. So this is, your, this is their system, which you okay. can customize with painting everything. So that's uh, really nice. Okay. So wow. this, is, uh, this was my first trial of that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and to get the character correct, um, the eyes have to be perfect too. So not only the yeah. color, but the everything about it, right? Especially yeah. even monsters and creatures, like uh, some of them are kind of opaque or they look, one eye is dead or something, so all that. So you can customize them yourself now that you've got that, that okay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and, and then when you, have, when you have like the placeholder eyes in there, it gives it a different feel too, because that's what I was noticing when I was looking through your pictures. I'm like, oh, is this the same one as the one that was finalized, or is it? Are they two different ones? So yeah, it does give it a lot of character. Yeah, yeah in instantly. Yeah, and then, um, for the hair did, did that was that a pretty tough skill to learn punching the hair because it I know it's meticulous, it takes a lot of time and stuff, but was that a, is that a um, from a sculpting perspective, was that a, a fun or not a very fun thing to learn? Uh, now I think it's really fun because in some way it's also the same as sculpting. You kind of sculpt with hair, how vague that also sounds, but uh, like, especially with like ape characters, you have to sculpt it without the hair and all the reference of course is with hair. So you have to mm -hmm. kind of right. predict what it will look like without hair, but you don't know if it worked out till you have added the hair. So oh, it's also yeah. really, really scary because it could be that you did all this work and you put the hair on and it doesn't look like a character. Yeah. But, uh, there, there's so many things you can do with hair and it also finishes, like it's a nice detail to to give to a bust, I think. It's, yeah. it's really yeah. unique, yeah. But it was uh, in the studio uh, that I told about, I learned kind of to do eyebrows and those kind of things. Yeah. But that, that's the hardest thing to do, so I wasn't that good at it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> once I came back home, because I at one point left, uh, I kind of had to reteach myself, like just to make like, a big fur and those kind of things. So I think that fundamental of the hardest thing made it kind of easy to do like these kind of things now. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the longer hair and the beards and stuff like that, like, like, mm. uh, like the, Mr. The dead guy behind you there, or even yeah. this King. Yeah. The King. Yeah. It, wow. And, uh, it just, so it, it makes that character. You know, when you see yeah. the hair, I mean, the, the, even the eyebrows, those big, long overgrown mm -hmm. eyebrows just make it so, so come to life. Yeah, it really makes a difference of a normal zombie and then a real character, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really like that. Yeah. Are you, is the is the, the fabric um, also sculpted with clay on this the same way I'm visioning? Or, or is that uh, is that fabric? No, it's really fabric. So I try always to make everything as real as possible. So also for the, like the clothes, I make it real. It's, it even has a chain mill on it, like of metal. And yeah. Then the, and the breastplate I made of, uh, I sculpted and then cast it in uh, polyurethane. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Kind of to give really those uh, those layers because I think if you would sculpt it as a whole, it would still look fine, but you see the lack of layers, I believe. Yeah. Like, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And and it's um, it, the painting too. I think you're you're a very skilled painter when it comes to like uh, just getting the right tone in, in that in that helmet or the in his um, his crown there. Um, oh, the, you know, it's, it looks so metallic, you know? So. Yeah. Actually, the helmet is from another studio. I, uh, I uh, co work with somebody, so, like the client asked me to make this, mm -hmm. and he actually had already someone who made the helmet. So I just made the oh, breastplate to match the helmet. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so you just got to make sure the head. Yeah, make sure, got to make sure the head's the right size at that point, right? Yeah, exactly. So he sent it. So uh, yeah, exactly. So you know, like he can fit his helmet because else it would be mm-hmm. like a bit of, yeah, <laughs> a yeah. bit of a hassle. Yeah. Wow, that's so. And I love the I love the detail on the back of the uh, the the entrance to the mountain. Right. I think yeah. that's what. That yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. In the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> and you. and that one is life size, right? That's a. Yeah, it's life size to the bus. God. And then when people when people commission you to do these, um, have you gotten commissions like from from movie studios themselves? Because I mean, these are spot on from the movie. You know, I mean, do you get do you get the studios commissioning you at all? No, not not really. It's also like it's such a different uh, yeah, ballpark. Like this is kind of the fundamentals of how of the special effects industry, of course. But I think it's yeah. still really a different uh, world. Like I'm just making realistic things. Okay. But in the special effects world, it's also really technical about how you can apply it for filming and everything. And that's something that I, I think is one of the reasons why they uh, wouldn't reach out to me for that reason. Are you? Are you? Uh, do you have? You could certainly do it tomorrow, but do you have like a, a a goal to get to to a special effects studio and do this like um, at as a as a profession only in the in the movie type of thing, or is you are you kind of just happy just doing it um, as a commission, or what's your what's your o- overall goal? Well, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with how it's now. Like um, I, I'm actually uh, studying to become a musician, so this is uh, kind of become a like overblown side hustle. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Because I at one point wanted to work in the film industry, but I just noticed the environment. It was just so tough, so many hours and so many. Like uh, I started real, I tried it out really young, and okay. I already noticed that I kind of got in the regions of a burnout. And I noticed like oh, I wow. can't handle, I can't handle that's this for forty years to like work sixty, seventeen hours a week. So that's too early just, to be burned yeah. out. Yeah. Exactly. So for that reason, I kind of made the decision to uh, switch or make it my hobby again and go for another passion that I have. So yeah, yeah. So you, you're not just just tell me you're never going to abandon sculpture. Just say that. No, no, no. Okay. I mean the reason that I I thought that uh, I thought about it like uh, maybe it's not like maybe it gives too much stress. But after the half year of not sculpting, like I started doing these kind of things. So it's uh, I think it will never leave. Good, good. Because you're too yeah. you're too damn talented to. <laughs> to, to give it up for music. Yeah. What, what 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 kind of music are you? Uh, uh, I'm studying uh, classical saxophone. Oh wow! Nice. That's amazing. Yeah, it's funny. It's the same uh, working uh, method, strangely enough. Yeah, I would, That's I would imagine. I would I would imagine so. And 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 we we need more people to do stuff like this. Like <laughs> like uh, yeah. this is so. I mean, this is outstanding. Uh, I, I and. Uh, so how, uh, we were talking about it before in the intro, like, you know, some things take up to 120 hours. Like, how long would you spend on something like this? Uh, this one, I think it actually went pretty, uh, like, smoothly, but it's really different. Like, uh, with orcs, it's cool because they have super extreme proportions. It's pretty easy to get, well, easy in brackets, but uh, to get a likeness because they're so off of human proportion, you mm-hmm. can really... Like, right. uh, because it's such a, a specific dimension of the head, it's so easy to, like, uh, relate to it, like, oh, that's the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you, for example, have to do a human character, it can take, like, three times as long. I think for this, I took, like, uh, with the back, because I also sculpted the whole uh, base for it, I think up to 70 hours, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But with a human, it could be, like, twice as long or... Or the same. It's it's always kind of a guess because you never know if it will work once you start sculpting. It's always kind of you just hope it works. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and how much of how much of um, your time before you put clay on uh, is spent with dimensions and measuring and, and getting getting the proportions perfect uh, and and or or do you just jump into it and then start hacking away? Yeah, mostly I like I study my uh, reference for a few days just in between to kind of get a feeling for the character. And then uh, what I like to do is like just have the amateur start sculpting from pictures. And from okay. there on, I have kind of got the sketch of the character and then I will start measuring everything. So then I got oh. kind of yeah, this is the feeling for the bust I want or the uh, posture or this kind of intensity. And then yeah, uh, after that, I do start doing the proportions so I don't have to re-sculpt things that are almost finished. 
Right, right. It makes total sense. Okay. okay. Wow. So do you like the freedom that something, a character like this just gives you where it takes off, I would say it takes off some of the pressure, right? When you're trying to create a likeness of something that a lot of people know, like a pop culture, yeah. culture or something like that, you can, I mean, you can add and you like, you put the, the, the plate scar and all that right, riding in there. Yeah. And so that's just all you, that's, that's like, oh no, this, that's, this is also uh, actually uh, from uh, the Hobbit. This one is. That's actually what a, that's the guy from the Hobbit. Yeah, it's uh, like a uh, bulk. It's like you have the main orc and then his son, and that's this one. It's, uh, oh, okay. One over yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Huh. They still have to need to finish the armor. Yeah. I guess yeah, I, I'm. I guess I'm. I'm not the Lord of the Rings expert. I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. Matt. Matt has a thing. You know, Matt has a giant statue. You're making giant statues. I gotta start making. I gotta start yeah. carving pumpkins and stop making statues. That's it. I gotta get into it. You, you gotta go watch the movie again. I have to. I do. You know that my kids are at the right age for it now too. Oh yeah, they'd love it. My God. Yeah, I mean, just and and then uh, so I, I definitely wanted. Um, That's insane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this I, I, again, all, all life size. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, have you now? I mean. I'm going to ask you, have you, have you done anything smaller than life size? I mean, what are, are small does scale? It even, does it even interest you? No, not really, but I did do some maquettes when I was a bit younger, just for the heck of it, like see what it was, but, uh, I just enjoy putting all the detail in, like yeah. I enjoy making it lifelike and, uh, like I love that people can make maquettes that are super detailed, but I just feel like for me, it lacks. The same quality that I can maybe produce if I make it life size. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, that, that that's incredible because usually people would would bigger. You actually work bigger and just stay there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's insane. And, and yo, is this is this? Um, I, I I think it's rigid, rigid right? It looks very uh, yeah, flowing. Okay, yeah. It's actually, uh, I always cast my characters like the skin part is all uh, a layer of silicone. Okay. And then after, after that, I cast resin to kind of give it like uh, like his clothing and everything. Because on this one, the clothing was actually sculpted because of the technical uh, difficulties with the casting and everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and afterwards, uh, the last part is uh, rigid foam. So then oh. you have like a solid piece, but not too uh, Heavy. Uh, clumsy Heavy. and everything. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can just handle it, yeah. And and he's got a, a, a sizable like base with all the barnacles and stuff on it. Do, do, mm -hmm. do you have a and it's got a back piece too, like a, a scene or something like that, or is it just this one has to be? Yeah, this one actually because he has so much going on. Because after I'm afterwards also made the head. There will, I yeah. don't have pictures yet, but there will be some soon. And it's 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 so much going on in this character with his beard yeah. and everything. So I felt for this one it was nice to have like a clean back. And okay. just like this old wooden uh, stand where he yeah. uh, sits on, yeah, it's beautiful. God, it just yeah. looks so. It looks like he, he he's gonna move, and and the <laughs> tentacles are all gonna do this. You know, just <laughs> so well done. Thank yeah, you. And, and I noticed in, in in your comment on on this one that um, that you got it says uh, I get a uh, a bit too enthusiastic when finishing uh, that you actually went in and actually did more work on this one. Yeah. It was uh, funny. I first, well, like, there was such a uh, complicated character, like with the tentacles, making a mold, casting it. It's really complicated for this one. And uh, I was super happy when it was finished. But afterwards, like, I was looking at the picture, I was like, I posted it already. But after looking, I was like, yeah, but I'm just not happy about it. Like, I saw ah. kind of things <laughs> like he, his skin tone was too light, uh, his eyes were in place right, uh, all kinds ah. of things. So I just, like, okay, screw it. I'm just going to delete the post again. And then, Two weeks later, I posted this like, okay, guys, here he is again, but now really finished. <laughs> okay. So that's why the comment was there. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I was always ta taught um, a sculpture is never completed. It's just abandoned. Yeah, exactly. Because you could you could go back and change. I'm sure you probably see it. Look at this and you go, oh, I could tweak this or that. And yeah. To me, it, it looks perfect. But I, I, I have to finally, especially when it's a piece of produce, we just, Paul and I just kind of walk away from it, take, take yeah. a couple pictures and we're fine, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, that's and, hilarious. And, and does uh, does lighting affect y y your judgment of it as well? If it's in good light, if it's in low light, and you know, well, I always kind of make the uh, 
for me, it should look right in every light. So actually, like, of course, the pictures you search for the best light, but uh, it should look good when you just walk in a workshop and you see it standing there in some corner. Okay. Then it should look good because this is, that is what it will look like when somebody has it at home. Mm -hmm. So like you can say like, oh, yeah, it looks shitty, but if you like put a good light on it, it works right, great. Yeah, yeah. That's a cop out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you, like, a, yeah. like a nightclub oh, when the lights come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four, three in the morning. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, that's what yeah, you look like." Cut like. we'll off the good lighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I always did, I, I always think about like jewelry because they have to have a certain lighting to get the most out of it. You know, yeah, a very specialized lighting. So I wondered if you if you had any of that. But th that's that's actually a good thing. Go ahead. Yeah. My question was about the photography you use to um, to showcase your pieces because it seems like you've got um, exceptional uh, photography. Is it something that you or do you, do you do your own photography or do you, do you do you kind of field that out for for the posts you make? Uh, it actually changed because like in progress, I just make it in a workshop like uh, just with yeah. I've just a good like telephones are great these days, so I just make yeah. it with a telephone and then I post it. But yeah. for the finished pieces, the last few months i'm now working uh i have actually two people one uh one is the first one that actually ordered something for me his oh. name is uh is a french uh, collector of uh, uh Lourdes melkor and he actually yeah he made these pictures okay from uh, alert so uh he really he's a photographer he makes movies and makes great pictures so he kind of at one point said like hey uh would you be okay if i make pictures of your stuff and then he sent it and was so happy with it because it's just like this showcases it even better than it maybe yeah. is even super happy. Yeah, because it, it puts it in that natural like meets back on the menu, boys. Yeah. Like you know, exactly. You yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, and he also makes cool videos of it and then in the environment with with the background music and then it's just then you know if it worked or not. You know, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. How oh, that's outstanding. Yeah. And also my father actually is now doing some photographing. So he did like the King of the Dead pictures and okay. uh, the picture of King Kong. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah. So it's Very better cool. than my telephone. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have a, and as a family operation, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now you have this outstanding collection of, of pieces that you've done. Like I could see a bunch behind you and stuff. Do you mm -hmm. ever do like a gallery exhibition or anything like that? Uh, not really. I also think like uh, I'm I'm now doing a lot of movie characters, but I'm thinking of uh, stepping well, not stepping away from it, but just uh, also doing different things. So I'm now thinking of uh, like after summer, then I have a bit more time than to start more doing pop culture uh, portraits and maybe even different size portraits. Like kind of go more uh, do my own thing. Okay. I still okay. keep making the monsters empty because I I am a big film geek, so I keep doing that. Yeah. But then. I can also kind of see where how far I can go with things. And that's uh, I think that will be more appropriate for something like that, maybe. How long before you do a Maceo Parker bust? <laughs> uh, well, of course he's a sex so uh <laughs> just saying. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Saying. <laughs> Not on schedule yet, but it could always happen. <laughs> it can happen. Yeah. So were, were you influenced well, I mean, by uh, by uh, American movies um, or or you know I mean I'm I'm not quite sure what the movies are in, in the Netherlands but it's like um, <laughs> but but um, you know we all were influenced from like movies around the world so like uh, did you grow up on, on, on like American movies or like how how did your influence? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's kind of a combination of my parents and also me just seeing things on television that I was kind of uh, intrigued by so. Really, movies that inspired me was like, of course, Jurassic Park, Gremlins, uh, uh, all, all those classic movies, uh, oh, Harry yeah. Henderson. And uh, yeah. I think the biggest one was Lost Rings because there I got like this bonus disc and that showed me that they had all these people making this stuff oh, for cool. money. And then oh, I was okay. like, oh, I, that's what I want to do. So then I really started uh, exploring like the possibilities of getting there. Wow. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, because like a lot I of love people, that one. I mean, uh, us growing up on movies and TV, you know, was a big influence for us. So like, I can imagine like being in another country and then still being influenced by American movies and television yeah. and stuff like that. I think our pop culture is pretty much the same. We have, of course, our own culture, but 
the movie genre and everything is really heavily influenced by America, and uh, I'm glad by it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, have you could, have you ever have you ever been to Hollywood and and uh, and visited folks? I know uh, I saw Rick Baker follows you, and, and he's kind of like the godfather of all of yeah. all uh, of all yeah, super, um, movie making. Have you been there? Yeah, well, no, not yet. I was actually pre COVID. I was thinking like this summer going to LA, maybe with IMAX or something, like to just have a visit and see uh, see if I can maybe visit some studios or just talk with people and uh, sure yeah of course uh, everything happened uh, the way it did yeah so m maybe the coming year it's kind of I'm waiting for it to be uh, an option and just yeah. would be fun like to I'm seeing so much from it on television I'm recreating so much things I think it's I should really get there once yeah Oh, absolutely well, if you do do that um please get in touch with me i have a lot of contacts that you can ah, cool. get, get in with that um, yeah mickey mickey's mr la he's you know living that's right, that's right. They call me 20 mr. years LA. or something now right mickey <laughs> um but i have and i will get of, back to you yeah yeah i <laughs> yeah. have a lot of people that work in the, the motion uh, picture industry but also television and stuff like that so yeah ah, nice um and uh yeah i mean uh, they, they would be enthusiastic that you're coming like you do all this amazing <laughs> work so uh definitely the uh d the doors will open for you i'm sure <laughs> um i mean but but and, and then looking at some of the uh, the different things so like is it did you ever create anything yourself like like uh, out of your brain and just say uh, and create new characters or is it all based on something I actually did, uh, like in the period that I was still an in intern, I did a lot of uh, like uh, own design creatures. So okay. just like to explore like when is something uh, realistic, how far can you go with transforming anatomy and everything. And of course, under the guidance still. And it's, uh, yeah, I think, I'm not sure. I, I can send some picture maybe uh, after this to you that uh, like then you see a little bit of like my own uh, thoughts of things. And it's also something I want to explore more because yeah, yeah, it's just so much fun to do things, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, now that you've completely nailed, you know, these these kind of uh, sculptures, and and it's, it's so recognizable, so instantaneously recognizable. I'm I'm fascinated to see what what some of your unique your own characters would be. Yeah. And like because yeah. because we we're with the Shiflet brothers were talking uh, about how what, what an influence Star Wars was on them, and so they say, and every creature they make. If you look hard enough, you can find a you know a reference of a, a a rancor or something in a in a Star Wars character, and I'd be curious to see if some of yours had like you know hints of uh, orcs or or you know because uh, because you're so damn good at them. I mean, it's just it's <laughs> going to be fun fun to watch. Yeah, I think in some way, and I think what Shifa Bottle says read through like something that inspires you, especially like uh, design style. Like uh, I really love the style of Weather Workshop and Rick Baker. They're they're always super natural like they distort everything but it's it fits so yeah. that's really a style i hope has influenced me that i can also use it myself yeah so i yeah. think yeah in some way it will come through and uh, like it will push, push through the, those style things oh yeah undoubtedly undoubtedly yeah it'll be it'll be your you know your style shining through and you know anyway I, I I'm I'm just curious to see what those what those are gonna start looking like. Yeah. So I hope I think with uh, Squidward it will be like uh, first uh, first glimpse of uh, what I will try to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what's it what's a day in the life like for you, Yop? When it's uh, when you you're doing music and you're in, in your um and, and you get to do you come to a studio and, and sculpt for a few hours or is it something where you just get to it when you get to it or day job? Yeah. Kind of thing? What, What's normal it's, mo it's mostly like uh, normally from like the normal wor uh, work days and hours I just like spent at uh, studying and uh, school and everything and like uh, practicing and then mostly in the evening I start working in the workshop so mo mostly after dinner then I have done all the like all the typical things you do in a the day then I have time and then I have like a few hours to work in a workshop every night and then I kind okay. of like work till uh, how late is like my agenda suits or uh, I don't know. So yeah, that's yeah. mostly the normal day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's chock full of uh, school practice and then you get to finally go car or sculpt. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I think in the summer it will be, uh, then I'm finally done with school. So I think then it will be a little bit more healthy balance, like a uh, little bit less uh, hectic. Yeah. So uh, sure. really looking forward to that also. Yeah. Yeah. How long before you were on tour with the band? Uh, 
Well, this summer actually, but it's uh, with the orchestra. Nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good. Right. Yeah. So it's all and starting you, up again a little bit here. So. Uh, and do you go all over Europe on your tour? I mean, is that the plan? Uh, well, this mostly is just like Holland, a lot of things, and, and some uh, like uh, some trips with uh, Dutch orchestras to different countries. Those are mostly the mostly the things. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Nice. Wow. Yeah, and I, I think it's only going to help your creativity in other things too, because it's just like you're taking a break from it. You're all you're sharpening up other things, and and uh, yeah, I think I think it's always good to take a break from stuff. I I, I need to take a break from some stuff and uh, get my yeah. creativity back. Uh, that's for sure. But um, uh, I want I wanted to uh, uh, I was I. It's funny because it's it's something that you did a long time ago, and I and I saw this. Um, and it, it took me back because in 1977, uh, I went to see uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the movie theaters. <laughs> and I remember it vividly because I actually got sick during the movie. And oh. uh, uh, I remember just uh being so sick I, I was only seven so but i was but but my my eyes were opening and every so often i would see bits and pieces of this movie so um but i do remember this exactly seeing uh this character and i'm like oh this is so cool i can't believe i'm so sick <laughs> um but i but I, I thought this was uh, brilliant can you tell me more about this one uh, this was actually the first commission I ever had, so uh, it was really uh, super challenging because I never worked for someone in this way. So it was for me really like, because I saw images and there weren't really good reference from this character. So it was really like, oh, I think it looks like this and I do my yeah. own interpretation. And actually at one point, like I uh, made the mold and uh, uh, I came to the workshop where I was like uh, as an intern. And they said like, yeah, this is just not what the way it should look. So I then I that like fully fully redid it again. <laughs> oh, oh, so it was God. like, but it was good because it like the first one really wasn't good enough. It was really like, uh, I think I like kind of slacked on it, like just because of nervousness, because there was no reference. I like like, okay, I think it looks like this, but that really showed through that nervousness of if it was right or not. So with this one like i had like more ref i found a little bit more reference because uh steve wang actually did a, a same bust of this one which was great for reference and uh yeah and that way this actually came out and of, again by the with this great picture of loris really makes it look like in the movie that scene where he comes out of the mm -hmm. ship mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah i think the photograph of it makes it even more like you know emerging like you said that the shadows are on it uh, it makes it even better. So yeah, yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that thing is also a f human head size as well. Like, two, uh, two. well, it's. I think it's um, kind of because you see them in the movie. They're also played by children. So I kind of make oh. it like I think this big, oh, okay. like a little bit like a child uh, size. Yeah. Okay. Wow. How cool. Yeah, I, I think it's also good to get like like honest feedback. Like it yeah. wasn't up to stuff, and it was like. Oh, okay. So not, you know, it, it, it helped you probably grasp the concept of like what it should be. It, it, I have to put more work into this. And if it, if you hit a home run, you'd be like, okay, that's all it takes. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't push you as much. So that's, it's always good to get good feedback for, for you artists out there. Um, it's, you know, sometimes you're not married to these things. It's like, oh, you need that honest uh, criticism um, from people, but I'll, I'll obviously take it from people that actually know um, and, and not people that don't know. Yeah, and it also kind of gives you a map, I believe. Like if you make something, everybody just says, oh, this is great and everything, then you don't know what you should improve. Like right. if you make something, of course, uh, don't uh, like murder someone with your commentary, but like if you say like, oh, yeah, cool, <laughs> but change this and this and this, then they know like, oh, cool, then I can work on that and then I can improve right. on myself and then in that way become better. But it's just saying it's nice or it looks great. Like I, I appreciate it, but I even appreciate more. If you see something, just tell it. Like those are the things I can really learn from. Yeah. Yeah. That, for that's, everyone, how that's, get, the same. that's how you get better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I've, I've, um, I've got three kids and, and, and my wife and I'll show them some of my carvings or whatever. And, and, um, there's ones that I can tell instantly. And Paul, Paul does the same thing when the kids look at it and, and go, Oh, that's great. That's really cool. And, and then I'm like, okay, so it sucks. So it's terrible. But uh, but other ones, when they look at it and like, oh crap, you know, they, then I'm like, okay, I, I hit something, you know. So it's 
it's fun to have kind of those those reactions, even if it is from your family. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and by the same respect, um, you know, th- your your kids or your family or people on the internet, uh, they're not going to go, oh, the, you know, the perspective is is off, or um, yeah. you know, the eyes are off or, uh, because of this, and you know, they're not going to have that kind of detailed. Um, yeah. feedback which you actually you probably need to like oh of course you know like i need to fix this or like you know the, the face is distorted you know just slightly but how do you fix it right yeah um, yeah so you need that that definite feedback hey yo do you do you have a favorite um maybe in, in your behind you there but do you have a favorite of what of what you've sculpted that you just keep you go back to you smiling like this is this is the best i've done or do you have a favorite uh, whew, I have to think about it a bit. Uh, I think it's, and, and maybe it's because I never finished it, but I at once made, uh, like, as a study, I made a portrait of an old woman. Okay. Just like, no, no specific uh, person, but for me, it really was like, oh, yeah, if I look at a picture now, it was like, oh, that really, it works, you know? It was like, if I look at it, it was like, oh, that's just, it's nice. I don't have to fix anything. Yeah, I think that's the only one I have that feeling with. The other, the other ones is always like, oh yeah, it's nice, but uh, ah. this and this, yeah. Okay, but it's, it's it's part of it. It's not super stressful. It's just you you know that happens. Yeah, but you know, and I love that because maybe maybe that's be- is it is it also because it's something you came out of your own head. I imagine that might have something to do with it too, right? And I know yeah, be maybe more, because but... exactly it was no, there was nothing like. Of course, there was an old lady, but it wasn't like a specific person, so you couldn't just. Right. Pick all the nice, like, oh yeah, this one has cool eyes, this one has a cool nose, and then you can just like mix it up and make like this nice fluid, like anatomy and anything. Yeah, right. That's cool. I I actually, I actually have a thought on this. A lot of the characters that you do are male based, so doing a female based character was probably a big challenge. And uh, you know, Matt and Paul uh, said the same thing. Like, I don't like doing females. Females are hard. Yeah. Females are so tough. I don't know what it is. But even with always. like other, even with other artists, you always hear and see that they kind of struggle with. And because I never did uh, a female portrait yet, also for that reason, I'm just pretty scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's also yeah, right. smooth and everything. Like you don't have really reference points. Like, uh, for example, this was an old lady, so then you have like all these wrinkles and everything that you kind of can hold on to. Like, oh yeah. This is where I'm at with the skull thing, with like yeah. smooth face. You don't know what you're doing. I know, I know. It's yeah. so it's so funny. It, 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 in a couple of Paul, Paul's done this too. But when, whenever we've made like kind of a youthful face or a younger face or a female face, um, it, they always end up looking. To, in, in my opinion, the ones I make end up looking so um, like possessed because I I don't because they're all like you know uh, yeah, they're, yeah. <laughs> I, they're like i'm trying too hard I, I but but then again when you don't really when you can't put a wrinkle in and you can't have that emotion other than that kind of smooth surface it you have to th- totally think about the bones and the yeah, muscles exactly. and everything else underneath it just that's that's just tough that's yeah. really just tough i find but the again, same problem with babies too like oh babies are hard too my god yeah that's it's definitely not me. going on the wheel, right, baby? No, not anymore. We we put young on the wheel once. Yeah, once. And keep keep that <laughs> on. Yeah. I mean, it. we're carving fruit, man. Like, it's. Yeah. I guess, but I mean, that's the whole point of the wheel. I guess is, if if you're not uncomfortable when you're cu- sculpting, uh, sculpting or carving, I guess, then you're a little too comfortable, right? You should always kind of have that little bit of anxiety, like I have to do a better job than the last one. Yeah. Somehow, yeah, some way, you got to, you know, you said you pay attention to everything, you measure everything, you you cross all the T's and dot all the I's, and then you still sit there going, did I get it right? Yeah. Like, ah, did. Yep. I, th- I think that's also like the excitement of it, right? Like, uh, sculpt yeah. something is cool, but the coolest thing is not knowing if it will work. Like, if you know it will work out, then why would you, like, that's my yeah. thought, like, why would I spend so many hours on something that I know will work? Like, yeah, that's a good I point. Right. What's the point? Like, I can also do something that I don't know if it works, and then I get further with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you, I, I like the feeling of thinking you might have done an okay job, and then when someone else sees it that doesn't, it doesn't have that capability. They're like, "That's outstanding." You're like, yeah. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with it. But you, you don't know any better, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> 
but that's that's why that's why artists artists are always their own toughest critics i think and and um you know because you just want to get better each time and i, I yeah to paul's point as soon as you're totally relaxed and everything it, it's probably you're not pushing yourself hard enough you know i think that's yeah. a good statement yeah so um you know this this seems awesome. to be uh yeah i mean just that guy's alive he is physically that yeah that's that's joaquin phoenix and he's alive right there yeah amazing it, it, i was i was definitely uh i mean you, you have a couple of these um but i mean just just the detail and then the, the the interesting thing is like you know this without the paint uh you know it's like i mean that that would be tough enough in itself but that it has to have the paint on top of it to kind of give it the real character so like um yeah i mean tell me your process in this like how you approach this one well, it's actually the same as, uh, like, as I told with the novel was, only with this is like, it becomes so much more intense because you know it's a human character, you know it's a famous person. And uh, like all the touch we have with the novel sculpture with a human face, it becomes 10 times worse. You really get kind of obsessed with how can I kind of, how can I get his face right? Like, yeah. is this picture correct? Is this lens of that picture, is that like, like you the way he looks real life or is it like a fish eye camera those kind of crazy stuff come by oh you're right yeah jeez yeah hey. and so then you have to also decide about. like uh the clothing and the hair i think i bought like four or five colors of hair before it came down to like oh yeah this is, looks like it's painted hair but still yeah. has this brown underlayer because yeah it's super tough like but it was also like the reason, like I was kind of stressed out with this one because it was so intense to get where I wanted it to be. But uh, yeah, also this kind of made me think like, oh yeah, but it was super challenging. So it's something I should be more like look more into. Like I can get better in this. And then for me, this was like this. This one was the reason I thought, okay, I want to do more humans because I was so kind of on nerve with this one that I really mm -hmm. thought like, okay, I want to get better with this and then perfectionize it. Like be as comfortable as I am with the creatures with the human faces and also like just small things like how can I make eyebrows and those kind of things we really get better at that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And you're such a talented painter. Um, you know, the, the skin tones on the, you know, on, on this guy's face and you can see that this is a makeup applied to skin which is a whole nother level of talent to be able to to have that read right. Uh, I, I imagine that took a long time for you to work on, huh? Yeah, I'm also, I always try to just like, uh, I always think about like what I'm making, like this was, I mean, if you think about it, it's just a guy with makeup on. So the first thing I thought like, okay, I'm first gonna paint him fully without the makeup, like uh, all the red blushes and everything. And then I will paint the whole face paint because then I'm sure that the undertones are correct. Because if you just, would like have a blanco and then would do the face makeup and then the surrounding skin you would give kind of pigment you still kind of miss that uh like skin layer underneath it i believe yeah 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 absolutely God, yeah, so this kind of how i always try to yeah a lot of thought goes into that a whole lot yeah. and you didn't stop here you, you created another one with a, yeah. another nice. expression dear god so, that's crazy so i mean just just I mean, outstanding. And uh, uh, I mean, do, do these reside somewhere? Are they just, are they, uh, can, can the public go see these or do you have them like under is a, a collection? Sheet somebody's somewhere? collection? <laughs> yeah, this this is actually someone, uh, someone specific, like I talked with him and I was, I just saw the movie, I was super enthusiastic and I asked him like, would it be cool if you would do like the hands with it, like when he does the smile and he was super enthusiastic about adding arms. And we, in the end, came up with this, like to make still the nice silhouette of a bust, but add yeah. the hands of the end scene. And uh, yeah, I really like the look of this one. Yeah. The hands are yeah, outstanding as well. Yes, yeah, actually yeah, my hands. <laughs> I, really I, am, I made mold of my own hands and then I casted oh, those uh, for the oh, how for, for this one, yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's so was funny. it was it difficult to get the, the positioning right? Because because the, there's no arms, right? So you just had to you have a mount to the bust. Was it tough to yeah, get yeah, them, yeah. you know, correctly, you know, put on the face? Huh? Well, it wasn't uh, that much of a problem. I like I molded my arms, I think, uh, till here, so I was sure I had enough of my arm. So oh, they don't have like so else you would have like this mannequin underneath it, and that always yeah. looks a bit wonky, I believe. 
yeah so i just like had the whole thing and then i like uh, just put a giant uh, nail into it at the place where it should be and then i started reworking it so uh, i cut it off and then i kind of uh, took the fingers and glued those at the right spot so it was like at the right angle right so in the and end it was just was pretty easy uh attention okay, to, to, yeah. to, to mount okay yeah and you exactly. had to, you you had to be a uh, a seamstress too did you did you create you had to go did you buy the the shirt and the the jacket and, and, and create those patterns and yeah. everything? Okay. Well, uh, no, wow. the shirt and uh, the uh, yellow vest I actually bought online and the, the his jacket was made by my mother who made the clothes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You got the whole family work. It is a yeah. I love it. I love that's it. My, uh, my uh, like the company name, that's, that sign is made by my brother actually. He's a graphic designer. Wow, so, so you got uh, a very creative yeah. family. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in the blood. It's in the blood for sure. Yeah. That's wow. Amazing. So and cool. And then this is this isn't the only medium that that you worked in. You actually, I mean, your your artistic style is, is here is I mean like very outstanding cool. as well. Very unique as well. So um, and this this is where you started doing stuff like this, right? Yeah, I mostly did like realistic paintings. This one is actually a specific commission to kind of get. Uh, I got sent like these pictures of an uh, artist and then kind of to recreate that style. That's why I kind of have this like, it's different from a normal style. Normally I just make uh, like realistic portraits. So this, this is really fun to do. So it's, uh, there's always something I also like to kind of like to try to recreate some more style and then to kind of pick something from it to use it for my own. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and and it, it doesn't stop there. You have actually have a lot of these. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's really, yeah I really think outstanding. I think the the Amy Winehouse one is more like my style. Like I always like to do a little bit of color touch and uh, just to make it a bit more popping. And then for the rest, really, uh, yeah, just realistic mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Now, is that what? What do you use? Is, what, is that acrylics? Is that oil? Uh, for the the Bob Dylan one is just a uh, pencil. Like, uh, uh, yes, uh, just like. Uh, Pencil. Pencil. Drawing pencils, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't find a better word. With, uh, and the uh, other one, the paintings are always acrylics. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Outstanding. Wow. And it's super impressive, Love too, it. because, I mean, like, it's they're, they're low light, like, uh, pictures, but, but you're doing, like, the, the lighting on them. It's like, that that's mm -hmm. impressive, because it's like, it's just not like in regular lighting. It's like, you can tell it's dark lighting um, on there. So, uh, yeah. very, very impressive. Yeah, I always like to do, like do something because, uh, of course, it's fun to make recreate pictures. But I also like to kind of do something else to make it like more than a picture. Because else you think like, why wouldn't you just take the picture? <laughs> right, yeah. right. That's a good point. Do, so do you have a a favorite uh, sculptor, uh, or maybe in classical the classic world, or even like your current, you know, modern one? Do you have somebody you just you can't get enough of their uh, Andy Freeze their stuff? Ooh, I have uh, a lot actually, but I think a uh, few of them, uh, Ian Tuiten, what he, his, he like at one point made a lot of, uh, for Rick Baker, a lot of display heads. Those were yeah. really nice. Yeah. Of course, uh, Kazuhiro makes, makes super nice big, uh, stuff. And let's see. Yeah, I think I'm, uh, strangely enough, really interested in those kind of sculptors that make super realistic, uh, yeah. like, faces, simply because I can't understand how, you, how they can get there. Like, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> well, you're you're there. I hate to say it. You, you figure you figured <laughs> out the path. <laughs> Pretty sure you got it. Yeah, there's a there's a sculptor I love, Ron Mwick, M U. Oh yeah, Mwick, 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 yeah. Mwick. Yeah, he, Mwick. And, he, and and Mickey, if you don't know who he is, he does these um, hyper realistic people, but and, and the scale sometimes is. You know, five hundred to one. You know, they're they're massive, like the size of a giant. Other ones would be, you know, this big. You know, like a, you know, a couple of old ladies standing by each other, and they happen to be about you know two foot tall. Um, but but they're they're staggeringly, like 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 Yope's work. They're they're just like that's somebody standing there. You know, and you look at them, and because yeah, that hyper realism stuff with the, the when when you get to the skin level, and you and it, you you just have to do a, a second look. To, to make sure this that it's not real, then then you're you've arrived. But uh, he's a big he's a really a really cool artist as well. I also love uh, like it just popped in my mind like you have of course uh, these were like human but like creature designers like also a big influence was like 
of course, Jordi Shell. Like, I think oh yeah, Jordi. Yeah, he's he's one, like one one of the first sculpting tutorials. So I was like his sculpting of a like a full size head was really cool. And uh, I think Norman Cabrera, for example, uh -huh. really like his yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah, I Jordi Shell. I think I I think I took that. That's a um, Stan Winston school. Is that the way you saw it? Like uh, no, I said an older one. It was actually uh, some mask making DVD actually. Oh wow! It was, okay. it was kind of before the whole internet uh, exploded. Like oh, okay. not that long ago because I'm not old enough. But uh, <laughs> I think some, <laughs> something from ten years ago, maybe twenty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I found it at some shop here locally. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, but so before we go on, I wanted to definitely uh, see what uh, Matt and Paul have done. Uh, so oh let, boy! Let me. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, Yo, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to have like your your, you know, the early work shown to everybody when you really you're not even close to being dead. But uh, that's so. So I've, I thought flirty, right? So this is gonna be. He's a, a very big. You know, he's gonna big smooching kiss. You know, you know, coming up, and I'm um, the nose is gonna be a little tiny gremlin nose, and then I'm gonna have some big brows come down but i think what i'm going to end up doing is like a lot of gremlins have some scales and like um little horns and stuff like that so i'll i'll, I'll make this little flirty person gremlin um i'll pretty i'll pretty him up but right now it's just the early <laughs> early process early process it fits the bill it fits the bill <laughs> paul's got his going on i'm oh, working boy. yeah Paul, that thing, that thing is um, a lot thicker than I, when you said it was an older kabocha, that, thing's, yeah, that thing looks, looks really good. Yeah, it's uh, coming along. I'm literally just kind of, like you said, Matt, the uh, trying to find the classic gremlin, yeah. almost the movie shit. I mean, it's got the head shape of a gremlin. If I yeah, truly totally. is one, it would actually totally. be. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. For the sake of argument, let's just say maybe I don't add it. Maybe this is a different kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, different, different, very different. But yeah, same yeah. thing with you, Matt. I, I when I think flirty, I think of like a pursed lips and maybe some the doughy eyes. Like I keep thinking of the the female gremlin from Gremlins too, right? Yeah. Is that yeah, what everybody yeah. else thinks of oh, so too? Okay. You know, that's 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 the sexy gremlin, as we call it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had it going on. <laughs> But aren't That's they all right. sexy though, Paul? Aren't all gremlins? The, the flashing gremlin was the sexiest <laughs> of all. He 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 was very confident in himself. Yeah, <laughs> and, and technically they're all movie stars. Right, right, <laughs> right. So they have they can be. That's right. They're all celebrities. Uh, have you ever done anything like like what they're carving? Have you ever tried anything um, of this degree? Not yet, actually. I, like last year, I got uh, two years ago. Actually, I got a pumpkin for someone, but it was like this small, so okay. <laughs> it oh, didn't really okay. work out. But uh, I'm actually curious: Are we just using using normal uh, loop tools for sculpting, or are they extra sharp or something? No. No. What we do is so on some of our loop tools, we'll add rakes. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually ah, yeah, cut yeah. But yeah, no, just your run of the mill loops. Different sizes and various angles to kind of dig and scrape and yeah, wow. ribbons. It's, it's it's just subtractive, right? What you know, you do additive and mm -hmm. but we try to do additive every now and again. That's why my fingers yeah. are usually covered in super glue. But if I got to so if I got to glue on a nose or something like that and blend it in, but most of the time it's subtractive. So yeah, just the simple yeah. the running your mill tools, maybe a dental tool here and there to clean stuff out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and you know, a lot of times we'll take uh, these tools um, because this surface is not very forgiving like a nice smooth clay is, mm -hmm. um, they break a lot easier. So we'll take like epoxy and put it in this little area oh, here. Yeah. Uh, you know, fill up these these little voids with epoxy. I'm, I'm not showing camera. Yeah, yeah, but, and fill those with, with uh, epoxy just, so, just to strengthen them because inevitably, you do this because all of my all of my um, all of my tools. This is a broken one. All the little wire ones, I probably break two or three a season, maybe more. So I always have backups, you know, everywhere else. I just, yeah. I just break the hell out of these things. Yeah, even with clay, I always break. At one point, they always break. Too, if you go like it's too dry and still you want to do details and everything, then it's, uh, right. yeah, 
I get I have the same problem. So we, I think what we what we're saying, uh, world is we need tool sponsors, and we need them now. And uh, <laughs> check our bio to send them to us or something, right? right. Yep. Well, def we're definitely. Yeah, mine break a lot. Uh, like do you are you a fan of? Uh, do you make your own tools from time to time? With um, I know bass string is is a good one. A lot of people like to use for raking, right on clay. You ever find yourself yeah. doing that? Uh, not really, simply because there are so many like uh, people that offer them like for a reasonable price. Like I couldn't make it for that price in the same quality. Right. So, uh, but I yeah. do sometimes just buy the cheap normal tools and then uh, like uh, make rakes of it, like same you do. Yeah. Just because yeah. it gives a little bit more, uh, like you get less bumps, you know. With uh, just a straight tool, it really goes over the clay. The way the clay is drying and everything, and with the rakes, it just super controlled in the way you want to make the forms. Yeah, exactly. Just make, yeah, it takes yeah. away your high points. Exactly. I, I don't know where I'd be without rake tools. I, I don't know, I, I think I started using them in the last few years, but before that it was just, you know, I just would use the flat end and, and you, you end up taking so much away sometimes and you're like kept killing your own sculptures. But yeah. then the rake is, the rake is so, it's, you know, it's like, you know, it helps you in, in immense ways because it, it knocks down all the big, high spots but doesn't dig in you know it, it yeah kinda, I, i'm a big fan big fan i actually had yeah, a lot of sculptures in the beginning oh sorry no go ahead uh, uh, i actually had a lot of sculptures in the beginning that i kind of messed up like first i sketched them in and i like, made them and they were like oh yeah this one i have and then i started doing all the like uh, smoothing out with the small tool and the whole form got destroyed in the end like you got a completely different sculpture in the end oh my gosh yeah so wow. uh, i'm also really glad with the uh, rake tools yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say a lot of the, I mean, it, you almost want people to not rake their tools in the beginning so that they can make those mistakes. I feel like <laughs> I learned, you know, I learned how to have soft hands in a way. Like I know how deep yeah. I can go on a not, you know, that the uh, the sharp side. Whereas if you start off with a rake, you really don't have that touch later on. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to know when to flip the tool around, and you really want to take a bit of material off, and when you want to smooth the surface. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it's a good learning experience to have really sharp tools at first. Yeah. <laughs> and just dig in. Make those mistakes. Make them early. Hey, yo. Oh, yeah. Wow. Awesome. Wow. I, I was going to ask him a question. Um, would you be as so kind as to, to maybe take one of the fellows you got behind you and, and bring it up? We, just to give us an idea. We, because the detail you see on all the pictures are amazing, but I'd love to see one of your guys maybe Ooh. close up. Um, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm knocking your, your uh, headphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it's like heavy. this one. Wow. He still needs his eyes, but like here you can kind of see, like here Whoa. the hair work, oh, and uh, like his teeth here in. <laughs> and like here, can can see the clothing. Yes, yes. And and you cast that whole chest piece. Oh, okay. That's yeah. cool. That's uh, like loose and like I still have to glue everything down and like finish it, but it kind of gives you an idea of the layers, like the chain mail and everything. Yeah. Here's the base. Wow. Oh my god, that is that is terrific. Good and, lord. And what you what you can't see is all of us leaning into the screen. Yeah, and to look at yeah the we're all like. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, he's not even kidding. I and Mickey, we might have to go back and do a count, but I don't remember ever saying "Wow" this much. Yeah, <laughs> like ever. Every time a clicker, like, wow. Mickey, go ahead and put that wow. in post production. Exactly. Please. Wow, wow, wow. Like wow, a little wow. bell, like a thing. Yeah. yeah, you can put a wow count in a wow count. <laughs> Just simply outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I again, I'm really curious to see where where your you know where some of your own personal uh, sculpts go. Um, and a, a kind of roundabout question, but do you have a, a, a favorite uh, Lord of the Rings movie? I think the first one for me, like The Fellowship. Okay. Also because it was for me like super nostalgic. It was the first time I saw anything like that. It was, I think it was six or something when the movie came out. So okay. it was like a big influence. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I, I was so enamored with Balrog. I mean, I, I've got yeah. one on my wall, but <laughs> yeah, I but I'm so enamored with with the scale. You remember when he's like falling and and, and you see this like red glow, and he finally mm -hmm. gets to the water, and you're like, yeah. that's how big that cavern was. Anyway, it's just like 
it, it, it they did such a great job making that world look just yeah monstrous i'm also super yeah. curious to the what the tv series will be like if it will be like the same level of uh I pray to God. I, yeah if peter jackson's doing it he's gonna he's certainly gonna make it make it good and i but i'm gonna yeah. i'm i'll be a huge fan no matter what i'm also curious if uh, weta will be involved with the uh, special effects I'm not sure oh, if they will do point. it because they have, have such a unique, unique style i don't think you can just recreate it but, uh, yeah i totally agree with you that's Anyway, I could I, totally, I could totally see be you being involved somehow in the. Yeah, uh, I do too. The apply work like this, I mean, like that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that would be great, fantastic. huh? Fantastic. Yeah, and, and what, like, what, what would if if you were, you know, like, let's play fantasy booking here. Uh, if, if, you were to, <laughs> if, if you were to get a job, like, what, what, what is something that you would love to do, on one of these movies? Yeah, just uh, sculpting. I think it's. I think sculpting uh, is just actually the only thing I'm comfortable enough in to actually ever do it for someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, of course, I learned all the other parts, but it's still something I'm constantly evolving and constantly checking myself. And I think sculpting would be something I would really love to do. Simply also because I love to create the whole character. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the thing the thing I think would be really fun is you can also write the score and perform it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a composer, so I'm uh, not. I, I hope they don't ask me for that. Yeah, I thought <laughs> my schedule threat. was hectic, and now you're going to score a movie and sculpt at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, That's so cool. But yeah, and and we were looking at this one earlier, wow. and just looking at like just the level of detail uh, of this one, yeah. and it's just mind blowing like how yeah. how amazing it is and i and i love like this like the little like the, the, the little bit of hair in there yeah, the little wispy bit. hair yeah i love and that then we're also big uh teeth fan like the people that can do yeah. like this crazy teeth and and make that a character out of it so um i mean just outstanding work so like uh, are, are do you do you study any like anatomy or anything or or you know anything like that to kind of get it or is it just like uh, like how, how do you how do you approach that yeah always I also of course also uh, yeah the same as I do with the sculpting you kind of look at how our teeth like how are they put in the mouth and what like you have uh, different kind of feet of course like how many of everything and those are kind of things you have to kind of keep in mind of course for orcs it's always a bit <laughs> of well it depends really if they uh, also had thought about that when making the teeth because sometimes it can be like they want to really go out of the window and don't keep in check with that and sometimes yeah, they I do so because uh, for example i have like a few teeth for see for uh lurch that work i have i think a spare here yeah and like also human teeth like here you can see like it's like unpainted yet still but here i have like the a human yeah sculpt it. sculpted wow. yeah like here aligned and i know like if i push it in the mold i know we're going straight in the mold okay right. okay and here I have like uh, this, of course, a whole different anatomy. It's like the up here, and then oh wow, and it wow. goes like that. Sure. Yeah. And th and those were those were uh, sculpted out of clay and then in cast. Is that what you made? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then I make uh, like I have here some silicone molds. Like this is one of those molds. Okay. And then okay. I just cast them in resin. Beautiful. Okay. Kai, you, you you are so blessed to have all that uh, um, that schooling uh, at an yeah. early age like that, and and be able to because I'm still struggling with trying to make molds and make I make more of a mess than I ever do with making molds when I try it. But but uh, you had it you had a professional uh, you know upbringing related yeah. to, to all the, all the all all facets of sculpting. That's so great. Yeah, and I'm super happy with it because I was also like with molds like uh, the biggest reason I kind of send a message out for people to help me was because I had like uh, with making molds I had like destroyed so many sculptures because I just couldn't uh, figure yeah. out how to make molds so I yeah. tried it but then I kind of didn't know about undercuts and everything so I ripped the whole mold uh, apart or the whole bust once I tried to cast something it was uh, so really thankful for that yeah good god yeah that's that's always been I don't know Paul but if you've made some molds but when it comes to making that's the part I fear the most when I have a clay anything that I'm just gonna that I'm proud of or I'm really happy with, 
making the mold and like you said where you potentially ruin it and you have to redo it i mean that's like yeah. that's why i just stay away from it altogether then i don't have to worry about that mine's always been uh on the smaller scale if i've ever done a mold and it's i i always do use super sculpey so i'll hit it with a hair dryer or a heat gun before mm -hmm. so that i don't i don't screw it up totally <laughs> even okay. if i screw up the mold i know i can try again yeah exactly yeah, also like these days i always make like silicone molds so that also kind of gives you that wiggle room you know it's a soft thing so if you pull it off maybe the ears will be broken but luckily so far since i'm making silicone molds they all went fine so i didn't need to redo anything of mold wise that's awesome so when you make a silicone mold do you is that a paint on process yeah i just brush on first a few thin layers and then i thicken it up a little bit to a jello kind of thing to kind of fill all the uh, like deep hole spots and everything. And then I do like a final thick layer of silicone to kind of get the, that thick jacket, you know? Wow. And, then af and then after that, I put uh, some acrylic uh, outer mold to keep the shape. And that's mostly the, I, I think I use it for every mold now, yeah. Wow. Now, do you think something like that would work for something like one of these on a wet surface? Does silicone dry that fast? Uh, yeah, silicone, like I use platinum silicone, like uh, platinum, and it dries out even, especially if you also like use a, a blow dryer, it will be like a half an hour and then it's dry enough to do the next layer. So I can wow. make a mold, like in half a day, I can make a full mold of a sculpture with the outer mold. So super oh, wow. fast process. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's really nice as you can right. go on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's in in the speed at which you can do it is great too. Yeah, because it's and horrible it, if you have, because you have also materials that take so long that you really need a full day free to kind of make the mold because else you will mess it up simply because of the material curing and everything. Right, it's and got to go yeah. its own speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm I mostly I don't have that uh, time frame. So it's I'm really glad that I found this kind of method that works for me. Where, where do you where do you get all your supplies and stuff in in the Netherlands? Uh, I have this Belgian company that's called uh, Art Supplies on the web, and they have like pretty much everything, also great prices. So uh, okay, I think and they just ship they, it like Amazon or anything else would, right? Just just shows yeah, up. they just they ship it with the uh, UPS, I believe, and it's always like within two days it's here, so it's perfect. Oh, that's good. Okay, yeah, because of course most materials come from America or England and everything, so if you would buy them directly it would take two weeks or something oh, God, yeah. Arrive. yeah yeah that's awesome matt we that's what we gotta stop doing we gotta start giving it a shot we gotta start molding stuff. i know we keep talking about it yeah. we, but we never do it you know, we gotta, we actually I know, gotta... we, get, we get yelled at by most guests for not doing it yes <laughs> we're like why don't you cast that i'm like oh, that sucks yeah. <laughs> that's why i don't want to look at it again maybe if it i'm a mold, a mold maker <laughs> That's right. I we know, just gotta go hire a mold maker and yeah. have them <laughs> just hand it to him and go. That's exactly make what this. we need. Yeah. Every yeah. Thursday, we're gonna need you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, tip, tips and tricks on molds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, and I wanted to make mention also. I mean, I always marvel at the level of detail. The fact that uh, this has cracked lips, um, and and like oh, the yeah. pores in the skin. It's it's just outstanding. And then uh, to look um, at the level of detail on something like this. El Fono. Uh, Pan's yeah. Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. that's insane. I love the idea of putting the character on the back as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was brilliant. I love that guy. Yeah, I always love to kind of make like uh, his backstory. I want to leave, like you have this whole uh, surface of base. It's so, I think it's really a missed opportunity to just make it flat all the time. Yeah. Like some characters mm -hmm. it works, but a lot of characters also like it would be nice to, you have all this, like you have all this surface and you're sculpting it anyway. So why not? make something that works for the character. So this was yeah. really kind of the yin yang feeling the movie gives, like the pill man is like the bad side and the found is mostly the good side of the whole movie, like the yeah. fantasy world. So, yeah. Yeah. And then he, and then the, the evil is certainly on his back. Did you, did you, uh, is this a commission for someone? Uh, yeah, it was commission. Yeah. Wow. Super straight because I, actually the commission didn't work out in the end because uh, of some uh, issues like, uh, at uh, at his home or something, I'm not sure anymore. And, oh. uh, but still, it ended ended up at uh, like uh, a friend of mine in France who really liked this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just send me his address. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want this one. And and it's I would also so like cool. to mention before I forget, 
I'd, I'd like to actually give a shout out to Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter. Um, it was a show on two seasons on Adult Swim. Um, you, you said backstory. This is literally a backstory. It's, it's on the back. And on that show, uh, one of the one of the reveals in that was the character actually had a backstory, which was, and he took off his shirt and he, on, tattooed on his back was his complete story. <laughs> like and it, it was like all it was like, it was like you know like uh like, like a thousand word story on on his back so it literally was his backstory so uh, i just brilliant. want to make mention of that that so this is also literal and figurative <laughs> <laughs> mickey mickey seems to have a little bit of this knowledge that everyone else seems it comes and goes but he he, he retains it and, i have uh, no i have no idea it. how i remember all this yeah, and it just stays <laughs> this little wow. thing trigger it like that <laughs> I think that show didn't arrive in Holland uh, yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week. Yeah. Stay tuned. Uh, so this is. Yeah. Uh, it says Lurts the uh, yeah. Iraq High. I'm not. I'm not familiar with this one. Um, tell me more about this one. Uh, this is the one actually in the first movie at the end, like that uh, Aragorn fights with. It's like uh, yeah. also the first Uruk High, I believe. So uh, yeah, and uh, it's really funny because I actually, as a kid, I sometimes went to these conventions with my brother who was a Star Wars fan. Yeah. And, uh, actually the actor of this uh, character, like I have a picture with him as a, like I was nine or something or eight me. Oh my maybe. gosh. So it's wow. really super funny that now in the end I made this character because I always loved this character. So that was also the reason I went to that convention. And uh, yeah, it's funny. That's how it kind of came full circle. <laughs> That's wild. That, yeah, he's got the white the white hand of Sauron on his, on his face. Yeah, he's the one who kills Aragorn. Uh, Aragorn? No, he still lives. <laughs> Not Aragorn. Uh, what, he, then he kills the, the, uh, bro, the, the, yeah, the Boromir. Boromir, that's right, with yeah. the arrow. Yeah, oh, the yeah. multiple arrows, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's this guy. What a bastard. Why did he kill Bor Boromir? Damn it. Anyway. <laughs> it's good for I know story. it's not real, but what a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and Voldemort. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, now, that, that has to be sitting in somebody's house right now, right? Because that's yeah. the... I, yeah, I was gonna say that's got to be somebody's pride and joy. Just yeah, you know, big Harry Potter fan would just die for that thing. That's so cool. Yeah, super fun to make this one also because it was so close to a human, but still a little bit of a creature. It was really uh, yeah, I really love making this one. Yeah, and you can still tell it's Ralph Fiennes. I mean, you you have like his look in there somehow. It's it's so cool. Yeah, most of the reference was also Ralph Fiennes. Like, uh, of course. A lot of Voldemort, but it's still the actor. So I first tried to make the actor and then cut off his nose and then make Voldemort out of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. Smart move. Yeah. Wow. And, the, and the lighting just really adds Yeah, that helps. To the, the yeah, really, it's great, great uh, photography again by, uh, by Loris. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just outstanding. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Just, <laughs> so amazing. And, and you know, you just have to remind yourself these are life size. It, it just kind of makes it so much cooler because it's, uh, I'm so used to seeing things that are, um, uh, you know, a scaled down version, one to yeah. four or whatever. But these are, you know, you can walk, you can walk into a dark house at night and be scared out of your damn mind. You, you know, <laughs> like, holy shit. You know, you see, you see one of those guys standing there. Actually, first, like a few years ago, I worked like from my apartment. So if you would walk in my apartment, you had all these uh, like oh. life size heads <laughs> surrounding if you would just walk in. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And, and yeah, you, don't, I, you, don't need, you don't need an alarm. You're just going to have those. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, like, that's actually true. And, and I, I'm not knowing much about, um, about getting this paint. Was this uh, red actually hard to get? Um, cause it's actually kind of like a more, like a neon type of, of red. It's a very interesting red color. Yeah. It's, it's really strange because I really looked at like how they cast it, uh, Hellboy, like his phone, like, and it was kind of like this pinkish dark red. And then because he has a lot of still pigment, but it's all red. So you, we have to like do the whole thing you do with human skin, but then all with a super bright red. So it's really against your like mm -hmm. nature of thinking yeah. Yeah, how do you paint skin it was really like painting foam because painting foam you can really do extreme things and mm -hmm. bring all these layers but i'm so used to painting silicone that is really a different thinking process wait this is foam no it is actually silicone but because okay. the movie of course is foam i okay. tried to replicate okay. it so i kind of had to think like okay did i have to paint it like uh -huh. foam or they try to paint like foam how can i give that look 
ontzettend oh, oh, oké. Okay. Ja, het is een soort uh, van, uh, van thinking process. Ja, het is een soort push and pull of everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, try, you try, always try to think like why did they make this decision and kind of uh, you always find a lot of things like oh that's the reason they made the character like mm -hmm. this kind of strange and energy thing. You really get the character at the end of making something like this. So cool. Oh my gosh. And then, you know, this <laughs> I still can't get over that. Me either. That's I just can't uh, even fathom how you did that. It's just that just looks like a person. That's not even yeah. that's just that's a person yeah, in an it, outfit. It looks like a person in in makeup and stuff like that and yep. just looking at you or or you know, definitely or like a, a Z brush. And actually and, and if you look at it too, it almost looks like a painting, like someone like kind of you know, a oh, realistic yeah. like painting of this as well. So uh, it's like uh, I love, and I, and I talk to other artists about this exact thing when I when I kind of pull stuff for their deck. Like, there's some artists that I, I'm like, I'm trying to figure this out. Like, is this real? Is this, uh, you know, hyper realistic? What medium is this? And th this is one of the pictures. I'm just like, wait, is, is this a drawing? Is this a painting? Is it wait, I, real? And I was so confused by it. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I honestly, I stare at it and I'm like, it has to be. It's either a digital painting or like CGI from the movie. Right. So it's yeah, just out. You you want up the computer. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. fooled yeah. fool every human eye <laughs> on this planet. So. Right. And and you know the only thing that kind of brought me back into the reality was the background of, of what was behind it. And I'm just yeah, like, it was oh, still before I had the workshop. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I'm like, oh, it's in something. So that I mean, yeah. that's where my brain uh, kind of went on that one. And then when I when I saw this one. Um, you know, I, I like now, now was this, was this the final or was this like on the way to being something else? Yeah, this, the, this actually the alerts, uh, we saw a few pictures before, like with the white hand, this actually, yeah. uh, like without the hair, without the clothing, without, uh, the final hand, of course. So this, there was a uh, kind of the nude version. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's really... that's, his, that's his that's his younger brother before he grew up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is also a good example of how creatures don't look the way they do without their hair. So right, yeah, yeah. Right. and and his and his outfit and all the little yeah, you know, just really makes yeah because it totally looks like another character almost. But when yeah, you say exactly. that now, I'm like, oh, there he is. Yeah, but yeah, so it's super it's also super scary again to make something like that because you don't know if it will work. Yeah. 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 Wow. And if you're a fan of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, this looks like a Bautista. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. In, in this one. Yeah. Uh, so this is, um, and then uh, the Berserker. Uh, it's like. Ah. Uh, yeah. This is actually a fancy character. This is one I just uh, kind of designed. That uh, oh, this forehead, that. that that forehead, and those that so spaced eyes, and the, the I, he looks real, and he could kill you like with just by <laughs> you know snap your neck. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. And then, and then you haven't put the eyes in this one yet, but I mean, this works without the eyes, correct? Or um, so, you, are you going to put other eyes in this and then kind of take it further? I mean, this one, I mean, this on its own looks amazing. Yeah, that's actually a funny story. I made this one uh, while in uh, while at the studio. I was I learned everything, and I actually never finished it. So I did the eyebrows on it, and I did the chest hair, and uh, I never made the eyes for it. So it's still standing in that workshop simply because I thought, like, yeah. It's I don't know. I felt like it's, it feels a bit strange if I just I, I left there like on good terms, like we're still uh, having contact. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel a bit strange to just go there and like pick it and then go <laughs> go out of the window, you know. So yeah. I just le left it there. Like uh, I made it there, so I was kind of I felt it was good to just leave it there. Mm, I agree. Like I said to them, if you throw it away, let me know because then I will uh, take it with me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll come get it. I'll come get it. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whatever they need. Yeah. It plays without so, the eyes too. I mean, it it, it does. He, yeah, he it looks even crazier. Yeah, totally. yeah, totally. Totally. And I and I, I I love the teeth also that 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 you know it's almost like you twisted it like it's like yeah. they're all kind of like disjointed in that yeah, in yeah. that way, which is actually gives it a, a really interesting feel as well. That looked like me yeah. in high school, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was kind of thinking of like an Irish pop brawler, you know, only then. Super, oh yeah, he would. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah super yeah. distorted. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the hooligans at, at a at a, yeah. at a soccer game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, super thug. Yeah, the super thug. Yeah, the berserker. Love it. Um, so 
as I told you, um, 90 minutes would go really qu quickly, and it, and it has. Yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely want to go back around and, and look at uh, Matt and Paul's uh, creations before uh, we wrap this one up. Um, so let me actually, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Matt. Let me, uh, yeah. Yo, okay. Sorry. So let's see if I can get some. There we go. Can you, a little better, maybe. Oh yeah. All good. So, so I got a lot of work to still go, but I'm, I'm trying to get it. So that the that it's kissy mouth, not just mm -hmm. a giant voluptuous mouth. So I, I'm I, I'm leaving a lot of this cheek material right now until I can get there, um, and just starting to kind of figure out where the eyes are going to go, but making that gremlin nose, and then eventually I'll get some of the spines and stuff going on down here. So, oh, <laughs> it's on the way. It's on the way. Nicely done. Yeah, oh. I wasn't ready. Sorry, your button hit me. <laughs> You button hooked me. Yeah. Uh, it's tough, really tough with uh, sunlight. Oh, you can, <laughs> see, it. Oh, you can yeah. see it perfectly. To get your shadows. Well, I'm saying from my perspective, to oh, get gotcha, shadows yeah. correct when I'm sculpting. But, but yeah. Shit. You're, you're cruising. That, that thing's really good, Paul. Oh, stop it. And look, almost done. I mean, holy mother of Mary. Yeah, you know me, though. <laughs> I'll sit and stare at it for another hour and a half and be like, oh, what can I do? And then I'll punch through in a spot and then it's like well now i gotta add ears and now i gotta add a body and yeah. <laughs> well you, you got a nice lake behind you that you can jump in and take a break right yes and i know i'm gonna be asked as soon as this is over to jump in with one of the little ones so <laughs> it doesn't look very warm but uh, i'm hip i'm ready that's awesome nice Nice. Well, um, you can see uh, Yope's work um, here uh, on Instagram. Is there anywhere else that we can see your work or buy your work? Or uh, no, it's mostly I'm always on uh, this and also on Facebook under the same name. And uh, yeah, if you have questions or anything, you can always contact me. And I mostly have like within a day, I will uh, will answer everything if you have oh. questions. <laughs> Definitely. If you ever decide to cast Squidward. Please reach out because that is yeah. I'll take the most one. outstanding thing. I will post it, and if you like it, then just it, contact me. <laughs> oh, absolutely! <laughs> These guys yeah. will come get it and uh, take it, take it yeah. home with them. Sw a swing right. by. <laughs> yeah, or take it, take it to Los Angeles when I'm there. Oh, there you there go. There you go. Now there yeah. you go. <laughs> That's perfect. Put it. You, you can you put it in your carry on. You know, just have a yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> easy. So cool. Love it. Yeah. So um, it's been an incredible uh, Carvers and Creators today. Um, if you like what we're doing, please like, follow, subscribe, tell a friend. Um, and uh, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, Yope, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to have you here today. And thank you for taking time. Um, you know, obviously the time differences are our uh, <laughs> challenge um but yeah. thank you so much for for making the time for us today i know that matt yeah. and paul are, are super stoked to have you on um and uh so yeah so matt paul did yeah. you guys have anything that you wanted to promote or or uh thank our guest yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, go. go ahead paul follow, follow this guy yeah that's it but is there, there we go. <laughs> here's a story yeah yeah. No, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, really. Thank you for inviting me. For me, this was like super new, and uh, really enjoyed it. It's a cool conversation. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, we definitely love to have you back again. You know, let Thanks. me know. Just contact me. I will uh, find a space. I love Perfect. it. Perfect. I appreciate it. that yeah. so much. Awesome. So we'll see you on another Carvers and Creators soon. And uh, good night from all of us. Yeah. Here. All right. <laughs> thank you. Take care.